What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, I want to tell you how Anel is becoming way better in OP08. Anel has been on the back burner a little bit. At least in, like, the OP06 meta, for instance. But it's coming back, and essentially what we've got is a bunch of new cards from OP08 and OP07, for what it's worth. And we're mashing them together with Anel, who is a phenomenal leader. Now, Anel, of course, we've seen this before. It is not a new leader. We've had it since OP05. And it is the, when you go down to no life, you go back up to one life. It's just a phenomenal skill that is going to work in basically any yellow deck ever. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, you do have to trash a card from your hand, but it's a small price to pay for getting essentially a billion extra life throughout the game. It is a great, great leader. But what else have we got going on here? Well, we got a bunch of stuff. We've got the Charlotte Flampe from EB01. Counter plus 2k. And on play, you can add a card from the top or bottom of your life to your hand and draw a card. Counter plus 2k is good. Getting two extra cards in hand is good. And because you're playing a now, sure, you don't want to go down on life too early if you can help it. But it doesn't really matter because the whole point of an L is you are going to be continually going from zero life back up to one. And that's going to be okay. Now we've got a couple copies of Shirahoshi also from EB01. And what we've got here is when this character is KO by an opponent's effect, you add a card from the top of your deck to the top of your life. And it's a zero cost blocker. Now, obviously, as a zero-cost blocker, it's a terrible blocker. I mean, it's a blocker. You will block an attack, but you'll go down immediately. But your opponent kind of has to do this. Because the only other option is to KO you with an effect rather than attacking into you. But, of course, if they KO you with an effect, you gain an extra life, and they're just not going to try and do that most of the time. Now, Capone Beige is a card we see in... Most yellow decks, it's Redonk. Mostly for the trigger. Up to one of your opponent's leader or character cards can't attack this turn. But also, it's got counter plus 2k again. Remember, with yellow decks, you are constantly recovering life. You are constantly getting extra life on the top of your life. So what that means is, whereas a regular deck has five life, and that's, you know, one in ten chance of each card ending up in your life... Because you're consistently putting more and more cards in there, that means that the chance of a particular card like Capone ending up in your life using its trigger becomes much, much higher. Now, one of the new cards from OP08 that we do see coming in here is Jewelry Bonnie. The new yellow Jewelry Bonnie. Looked good when we saw it. Looks like it's coming out quite nicely here. We got a free cost card and Don X1 on your turn once per turn. When your opponent loses a life, draw two and trash one. As a trigger, draw two and trash one. It's a good draw engine that especially comes in when your opponent's losing life. Although, again, as a trigger as well. Decent character, there for draw. That works very, very nicely. We've got the Kikanojo from OP06. On KO, if your opponent's got three or fewer life cards, then you get to add a card on the top of your deck to the top of your life. So get your opponent down to three at least, and then this works very nicely. And as a trigger, if your opponent's got three or less life, you get to play this for free, which is awesome. You need to get your opponent down to three life, but when you do, this card becomes nuts. And obviously, like so many yellow decks we've seen before, this is a deck where you really want to be playing just a whole bunch of cards that have got trigger, because they're going to come up more often. Now, we do have an Egghead Island Frankie. Actually came around in OP07, but it's a very, very nice card. And we've got Counter Plus 2000. And as a trigger, you draw a card. And if you've got one or less life, you play it for free. But of course, the whole point of a now is that you want to be constantly on one life. So you go down to zero, and then the skill on a L puts you back up. So even more so than most yellow decks, this is a phenomenal card. Because you're going to exist in a situation for most of the game where this is just comes out as a trigger. Play a 5k body for free while drawing a card. That's Redonk. Speaking of Egghead Island versions of the Straw Hats, we've got a Nami in OP08 which comes in very nicely here as well. 
on play or as a trigger, trash a card with trigger from your hand, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of five or less, and then if you've got three or fewer cards in hand, you draw one. Well, again, the, the majority of your deck here has got trigger. Like that, That's the whole point. That's what we do in yellow. So you're probably going to have something with trigger you can afford to discard. Then you get to KO a character and potentially draw a card. That's pretty good. We're not talking about black decks where you are lowering cost and then getting rid of everyone. But five cost or less is still pretty gosh darn good. Speaking of Egghead Island versions of Straw Hat characters, we've also got the Luffy here from OP07. Yeah, it's an Anel deck, but we're just playing a bunch of Egghead Island Straw Hats, apparently. Which is cool. Activate main. You may place this character into your trash. And if your life is two or less, and as we've discussed most of the time, it will be. And we've always got Charlotte Flampe to force you down a bit if you need to. KO one of your opponent's characters that cost four or less and then draw a card. As a trigger, you just KO a four or less. But you're seeing some themes emerging here. We've got a lot of board control with KOing characters. We've got a decent amount of draw coming in here. This is a deck which is absolutely going to work. And then when we get to the big bodies, these are going to look very, very familiar. Obviously, we got the Charlotte Katakuri from OP03. On play, you add a character of a cost of eight or less to the top or bottom of the owner's life face up. So firstly, you gain an extra life, yay. Secondly, that extra life is going to have a trigger because pretty much all your characters do and you choose what goes back on top. And thirdly, it's an 8k body on the board. Obviously, Charlotte Katakuri is nuts. We've all seen this since OPO3 came out, but it's still nice to have a little bit of a reminder. We've then got ourselves Yamato, another card with which we should all be quite familiar. This one sees a bunch of play. It's the one from OPO4. And on play, KO one of your opponent's characters with a cost equal to or less than the total of yours and your opponent's life, which, let's face it, is not going to be that high all the time because your life is going to be low. But if you have one or less life, which, again, as we've discussed, is where you're going to be playing the game most of the time, add a card from the top of your deck to the top of your life. We've got lots of recovery going on here. And cards like Yamato and Frankie are so well suited to an Anel deck because you're going down to one life and hoping to basically stay there for the rest of the game. It works beautifully. And then we've got the Ace from OP07, the, the, the newer big character in the set. Seeker Air Ace from OP07. And what we've got here is 10 cost, 10,000 power. But on play, you can add a card from the top of your deck to the top of your life. And then if you've got two or fewer life cards, this character gains Rush for the turn. And this is just, again, building up everything we've seen in the deck so far. It's got recovery, like a bunch of the cards in this deck have. But also, you're probably going to be low enough on life that when you play this, you get Rush. And then you've got basically an extra life. And you're also having a 10k character with Rush. Like, I cannot be the only person that thinks this looks ridiculous. And I don't think I am. In terms of event cards here, we got a couple, and they work rather nicely. We've got the zero cost, you're the one who should disappear. And it's got a counter, trash a card from your hand, to give a leader or character plus 3,000 for the battle. Not bad. Two cards in hand, not using any Don, and just getting a big bump. But as a trigger, if you've got no life, you may add up to one card from the top of your deck to the top of your life and then trash a card from your hand. Basically like a nail skill as a trigger. But you know what? You're building your deck, so you're basically going down to life and kind of staying there. You're on one life and just chilling. So this actually a lot of the time is going to work. And I love this. This makes me very, very happy. And then we got the six cards, Kingdom Come. KO one of your opponent's characters, any of your opponent's characters, no qualifiers there. And then trash card from the top of your life until you've got one life card. Again, if you want to go down to one life and we have a bunch of cards here that benefit when you do, this will get you there aggressively. But we've also got a really nice trigger, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost equal to or less than the total of yours and your opponent's life. Sounds a lot like Yamato now, doesn't it? And this works. Honestly, 
it's another great trigger. And that's the point with this deck. If we look at the deck list as a whole, not every single card has trigger. Uh, Yamato doesn't have a trigger. Katakuri doesn't have a trigger. Flampei doesn't have a trigger. But most of these absolutely do. And they are good triggers. And we're KOing a bunch of characters. We've obviously got Capone Beige to stop our opponent attacking with a particular character. And then we've got big characters. We've got Rush. We're recovering life all the time. It's not a Sky Island deck really at all, other than maybe the event cards. But what it essentially is, you notice there aren't even any generic searches in here. It's a deck list that basically plays four of every character, other than Shirahoshi, because you're not really playing any search. Because this is just yellow good stuff. We've got a bunch of Egghead Island straw hats, but then we've also got a big mum in terms of Charlotte Katakuri, and then Yamato and Capone Beige, and it's a little all over the place. And I suppose Charlotte Flampe is big mum as well. But the whole point here is that Anel's got such a good leader skill that you just play a bunch of good yellow things and you play cards that really combo nicely with a now specific skill and it works out rather nicely. So there we go. Turns out when OP08 comes out, yellow Anel, still awesome. But now it's over to you guys. Are you going to be playing it now when OP08 comes out? Do you think it's just come a lot better? Or do you think there's a better yellow deck out there? Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.